welcome to the Dental Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kara Dent, and I have this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create A teams. Welcome to the Dental A Team Podcast. Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira and Spiffy Tiffy on the pod today. And Tiff, how are you doing today? Good. It's so hard to like keep it quiet over here. When you uh, announce me, always. But <laughs> I didn't Spiffy know. Tippy has stuck. <laughs> Spiffy Tippy has stuck. And um, I actually, we have a new platinum office who just joined us. And when this office called, literally, I was messaging Tiff as we were talking. I'm like, Tiff, this office was made for you. So I told the office, I'm like, if you haven't heard her on the podcast, just <laughs> look up Spiffy Tippy. <laughs> and I had to try and say it without giggling. Because I'm like, literally, Tiff is one of the greatest consultants, and she's also called Spiffy Tiffy these days. So, <laughs> you know, Tiff. Well, thank you. Yeah, of course. So, Tiff, let's, uh, it's obviously day after 4th of July, and I feel like we need to give a special shout out on the podcast today um, for just the freedom of our country. I am obsessed with the American flag, with living in um, the US of A. I know there's a thousand things wrong with our country, but I think that there's a million things right with our country. And whether you live here in America, whether you are born here in America, um, I feel like it's just super important to, to wave that patriotism because at the end of the day, because of where we live, Dental A-Team exists. And that is honestly, I'm so thankful for the freedom to create the company we did and to serve the people we are able to in the way that we want. And I just think that that's a huge blessing to be a part of a, a nation and a country that that does that. So Tiff, I'm all about waving that flag, singing our freedom this year, because I really do feel so thankful that our lives, especially you and me, Tiff, I mean, we started this mm -hmm dental team baby many, many years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And to just be able to have the freedom to live the way we want, to breathe the way we want, to act the way we want, and to to be able to serve is truly a miracle for me. Yeah, I totally agree. I think no matter what, it's great to acknowledge the holiday and acknowledge, you know, that we, we have people out there fighting for our freedoms and the freedoms that we do have. And like you said, while it may not look perfect all the time and I know there are a million other sides to every story and everything. I think regardless, it's really great to just look at what we've been able to create even as individuals because of where we live. And I think being able to create a company that's able to put out so much solid information for an industry that really doesn't have a lot of information out there, um, aside from learning how to dentist, um, <laughs> the other pieces just aren't out there. So for us to be able to take that and be able to roll with it and create a company that really just helps the masses and helps on personal side too. I think it's really cool. It's I agree. Awesome. So I hope you guys had an incredible 4th of July and just really, um, whether you celebrate or you don't celebrate, um, I think it's always a good time. Holidays are my favorite time to reflect back on, on what freedoms I am thankful that I have. And, and also for the people who are serving to make my life amazing, whether it's, um, in the military in the Navy on podcasts, on mentors, on free resources, on paid resources, but just to reach out to those people who have, who've truly sacrificed in some way to make your life amazing. So in that same vein, Tiff, today's topic is, um, typically one where we would dive into a case acceptance. Uh, but you and I decided, of course, Spiffy Tiffy and Kira on the pod, we're going to take it our <laughs> own way. Um, but really diving into getting the yes in life. And Tiff, I think you, there is no greater person than you in our team to talk about how we can like get more yeses in life. You live, breathe, die, like all of this, it bleeds through you, um, about how we can get more yeses through life of, of really just getting the yes in life. And I don't know where this podcast is going to go guys. Honestly, it's going to be a total rift between Tiff and myself, <laughs> but, uh, we're going to, we're going to talk about how to get the yes in life. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's, 
it's awesome and it's hilarious at the same time because we we have a plan and and we're on the plan we're staying on the plan this was this was the title of the podcast we were going with but i love that it's like you know what in the moment we're getting ready to record we're gonna do something totally different because it's just who we are it's just literally that's what runs through our blood is we're gonna do this our way and that's getting the yes right like we're gonna do this our way um because it works and it's gonna be fantastic and people are gonna love it and i think that is something that we just pour out into the universe is the confidence, not the, not the egotistical, I know everything, but the confidence of no, I know what I have is going to help someone. And if I can touch one person's life today, that's enough for me. And I think that's part of that getting the yes in life is really just owning who you are and what you have to offer and understanding that you're, you're going to impact someone somewhere. So why not take the moment to just put it all out there? Yeah, for sure. And I actually think it's, it's ironic. Um, again, this is not scripted. This is Tiff and I just real Never. raw today. Um, that I think when you get the yes in life and you are living your best life, that does relate to getting the yes with patience and with treatment plans because you are confident as yourself. Um, and yeah. that's ultimately what patients are looking for with treatment plans and with, um, coming to the dentist. And that's ultimately what they're quote unquote buying, if you will, is your confidence. So I think some of the things for me, uh, my dad growing up, my dad and I were always coined the lucky ones. My dad is a very, very, very lucky individual. If he goes to any raffle, my dad is guaranteed to win. Um, and I remember I'm the second of seven kids. So there's a slew of us. And I remember always thinking, I want to be like my dad. I want to be so lucky because my mom was always so jealous. And she's like, oh, Rick, he always just wins. And my dad's like, yeah, it's super good to be lucky. And I thought I'm going to be like my dad. I'm not going to be like my mom. Are you kidding me? I'm going to be lucky, not not unlucky. And I think that luck actually is truly a mindset. My dad can go through life in um, seeing all the wins in his life. And I think it builds and stacks momentum for him. And so my dad, like when he walks into a raffle, it's like he demands and commands that he's going to win and he doesn't rig it by any stretch, but my dad really does demand and command to have this incredible life, but yet in a way where he is so much fun. People who meet my dad just love him automatically. And I think that it's because he truly is just happy in life. And I feel like that to me at least is getting the yes in life, finding the way to enjoy my life, to have it be my dream life. But I don't know about you, Tiff. I have found that I always have these goals, which I think goals are very wise. They're milestones to to pull us forward. They're stars to guide by, not sticks to beat ourselves with. And I've just found that every time I hit that milestone as of late, I I think I'm going to feel a certain way. And then I get there and I'm like, oh, this is, this is what it is. And I almost feel disappointed. And so then I'm like, well, I guess I just didn't have a good enough goal. I need a harder goal or a more fulfilling goal. And yet I think I've missed the point of like getting the yeses. It's not about achieving certain milestones in my life, but it's about feeling the fulfillment and the journey throughout that I really enjoy. That's at least like super deep. My mind hasn't even quite comprehended it. I don't know how you feel about that, but that's a lot of like for me at least of how to get more yeses in my life is truly finding fulfillment rather than hitting milestones. Absolutely. I think it's that weird phenomenon that we, especially here in America, have as we're seeing, we're talking 4th of July. Like, and I think Americans are super goal oriented and we're always looking for the next thing. We're always looking to achieve something more. We're looking for, okay, well, we're here, but like I could be there. So what do I need to do to get there? And when I get there is when I'm going to feel this feeling. So we attach the desire to feel a certain way to an accomplishment rather than figuring out how to, how to, feel that way at any space of life. And I think getting the yes is 100%. It's it's your mindset, it's your feelings, it's where you're at in life and really just creating that happiness from within inside of you. And I think when you figure that out, when a person can say, you know what, actually, this is how I wanna feel. This is what fulfillment feels like. Fulfillment feels like peace, feels like content. It feels like um, I'm really just like, happy to be where I'm at, even though I'm reaching for something else, when I reach that goal, that goal isn't what's going to create the feeling. The feeling is created inside of me no matter what. So if I attach this expectation of like, oh, when I do that, I'm going to have this overwhelming joy just flowing out of me because I finally got there. 
it might not happen. You might be exhausted and be like, why in the world did I put all that work into this? I can't believe this. And so your expectation is not met. But if you can get there and and feel that feeling because you know how to create it, now it's more about just achieving the goal, not achieving a feeling. Hello, Dentally Team listeners. What would it take for you guys to just completely and utterly change your practice? Like truly, if you think about it, because for me, I know oftentimes it's just having somebody right by my side, pushing me along, holding me accountable, having somebody to spin ideas off of. And honestly, that's all it takes most of the time for us to go from good to great. Usually it's taking the knowledge that we learn and actually executing it. That's why I would love to invite you to join our Platinum Virtual, where we do a coaching call, a Zoom team training. We invite you to our community and we just really dive deep with you. We're that partner right by you to help you go from good to great. So if you're wanting to join, take your practice to the next level and you know it's time for you to implement, execute, and go to that next level, email us hello at the dentalyteam.com and I would be so excited to welcome you as our newest Platinum Virtual member. Can't wait to see you there. Yeah, for sure. And Tiff, I think this is something you and I, believe it or not, guys, Tiff and I actually do personal coaching for ourselves. And <laughs> Tiff and I attended a, a coaching together. And I remember when we talked about this whole thing. So it's like, what goal am I aspiring to? Like right now it is to create residual wealth. And it's because honest to goodness, I believe that if I can create residual wealth, then I can say yes to everything. Like that's mm-hmm. why I'm striving for that. And it's to be able to say yes to more things in my life. So ironically and coincidentally getting the yes for me was attached to wealth. But yeah, I also set up all these rules of I couldn't feel that way today because I don't have residual recurring wealth in the way I defined it and thought I had to be there. And so it's really cutting down a lot of those barriers and a lot of those uh, restrictions to be able to feel more yes, which again, let's tie it right into patient world. Guys, the way you get yeses to a treatment plan and a case acceptance is by removing the barriers. And literally right here, I'm having a light bulb aha moment. So thanks for being a part of my, my journey here with me guys on the podcast. Um, but removing those restrictions and those barriers and those limitations, I personally think is the way to have more yeses and more fulfillment. And Tiff, when you said fulfillment, it's like having peace, having contentment. I remember having a coach tell me that and I wanted to like rip my, like scratch my eyes out. Cause I'm like, I don't want to slow down to feel quote unquote fulfilled. Like, great. I'm going to be sitting on a couch like a lard and doing nothing with my life, but that's how fulfillment is. And it was really helpful for me to see like, that's not my definition of fulfillment for me. Kira's definition of fulfillment is like Tiff knows this. We, I think we're like Tasmanian devils when we're together. Like there is so much energy combusting between the two of us that it is just like a whirlwind, super awesome excitement. Like I would never want to give that up to feel fulfilled, but for me, it's being present and with the people that I love more often. Like that to me is ultimate fulfillment and being able to say yes to the things I want to do in life. Like that is what it is today. So that was a lot of different pieces, but I think like the overall piece I just took from what you said, Tiff, and then talking it through right here was how can I remove more restrictions, more expectations, more barriers, and allow myself to feel happier more often on a daily basis, rather than always waiting until I achieve certain milestones. Because bottom line is I have hit a ton of those milestones. I remember hearing a conference and someone said, the day I had a million dollars in my bank account, I closed my computer and cried. And I've thought about that. And it's like such a weak, yucky feeling that I was like, I never, ever, ever want to feel that. So it's like having the opportunity to feel happier today and not waiting to hit those milestones was kind of my takeaway of how to get more yeses through life. For sure. For sure. And I think I had a coach tell me once, um, going through personal development, right? I think we all get sucked in that cycle of like, okay, if I just fix this one more thing, if I just learn how to do this, if I fix this one emotional like barrier that I have, that's when I'll be happy. Or if I get rid of this one person and fix all the damage they cause, that's when I'll be happy. But that's an achievement too. So that's that. So my coach told me, you know, what does happiness actually feel like inside of you? And I was like, well, I don't know. Like right now I feel like I just feel good. Like I feel like I'm coasting. I'm just in that like medium zone of like, nothing's good, nothing's bad. And she said to me, well, why is, why can't that be your happy? And I was like, well, I don't know, because I feel like I need to be laughing all the time and smiling and I need to be like joyous. I need to be pouring out all of this love constantly. And she said, doesn't that sound exhausting? 
I'm like, yeah, it actually <laughs> does. Like, yes, like, why are you calling me out so hard? But she did because I needed it. Uh, and it, it really taught me to see and appreciate contempt. Like, I've always looked at contempt as a bad thing because you're not achieving anything. You're not going for anything. Like, why are you just sitting there? But contempt as a feeling, like, I'm just good is my happy. And that is the space I'm telling you when life flows to me. That is the space of getting the yes for me. They're like, I'm not, I'm not jumping for for joy right now. Like I'm not stressing my body there. I'm not depressed. I'm just good. And that's when things flow in. That's when the treatment case acceptance is there because I'm confident. I'm like, no, like I am good. I am in a good space. I'm I'm healing and I'm happy and there's never going to be a space, FYI, in case nobody's realized this, there is never going to be a space of life where you're like, you know what, I'm fully healed. Like, I am now Buddha. Like, I have come to the end and I know all the things. It's just not going to happen. It's a constant involvement um, of, as a person and it's constantly flowing. But that space where you're confident and you're like, I know that I'm in a good space. I know this is where I'm meant to be. I know this is what I'm meant to be doing with my life. That's when the yeses start coming. And I think it changes. It, Shakira knows for me, it freaking changes all the time. Some days I'm like, no, I'm the best coach ever. Some days I'm like, I don't think I'm supposed to be coaching. I think I'm supposed to be doing this over here. And she's like, okay, well, like go do that for a sec and then come back to coaching when you realize that's where you're supposed to be. So like we have to play around with it and find those spaces. So I don't, want to say that and make people think like if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing you can't have that it's just really all about finding the feeling inside of you and learning how to create it for yourself so that you have that confidence and the the power to own your own space and get those yeses and sometimes i think kara will agree with this sometimes getting a no is actually getting a yes in life Sometimes we forget that not everything we're seeking or thinking that we need in life is meant for us. And sometimes that no opens up a yes. And it's a weird paradox and it's easy to forget in the moment. But that rejection and that no, you can't have this right now or this wasn't meant for you can feel really tough. But sometimes that's the yes that we need. I love that. And that ties me into probably my favorite quote from Tony Robbins. And that is life is happening for you and not to you. And it's a good segue Tiff, because as you were saying it, it reminded me actually of this really cool fable that I want to share with you guys today. Um, and it's the ancient Chinese farmer parable or fable. So if you guys have heard it, fantastic. Um, I think it's a good reminder that ties into getting the yes in life. And it says a farmer who was feeling down and out because his farm was not doing well, went to a local guru to complain about his plight and seek advice. The guru's response to his story, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. The farmer found this guru surprising advice, disappointing and confusing. He tossed and turned that night unable to sleep for worry about his situation. His head spun imagining his family's awful future. Hashtag the life of a dentist slash business owner slash any type of owner, right? We're always imagining this. Mm -hmm. When the farmer woke up in the morning, he was shocked to see a wild horse had entered his yard. The horse was an impressively strong stallion that he would be able to harness to use to work the fields. Ecstatic, the farmer ran to tell the guru about his good fortune. The guru's response to his story, maybe it's good maybe it's bad. Wow. The farmer thought I didn't see that coming. The farmer invested all the money he had left in his seeds. He planted the seeds with the help of the horse. Spring turned into summer and fall. And just as it was time to bring in the harvest, the farmer woke one morning to find that his horse had run away. The farmer was so disappointed. He'd spent all his money on the seeds and planted all summer. And now he couldn't bring in the harvest. Feeling anxious and overwhelmed, the farmer returned to the guru. After listening to the story, the guru simply said, maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. This can't be good, thought the farmer. The next day, the stallion returned and brought with him a mare. Now the farmer had two horses to help bring in the crops and would be able to have horses in the future as the pair produce offspring. The farmer excitedly told the guru this wonderful news. The guru's response, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. The next day, the farmer's son was riding the stallion while he was helping with the harvest. The son was bucked up the horse and sustained injuries that would incapacitate him for months. Overcome with grief and worry, the farmer returned to the guru. Again, the guru said, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Really, how could this be good, thought the farmer. The next week, army recruiters came to town. The country was at war and all able-bodied young men were taken off to fight at the front lines. The son's injury saved him from having to go off to fight. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. Maybe it's somewhere in between. Maybe it's some of both. And I have thought of that fable so many times in my life of, just like Tiff said, that no, that yes, that that just finding that centered space uh, really, truly 
life is maybe good, maybe bad, but it's all happening for us. And I think it's like my final thought on all of this in conjunction with that is I think a lot of times the way to say to get more yeses in life is also to say yes to more things and Mm -hmm. to find ways to to live in the moment and to be around people you love more if that's your jam. And if it's not, it's cool. I'm a, I'm an introverted, extroverted, introverted, extroverted. Like it depends on the day of what I want in my life, which I think all of us are, but really like finding ways that make you happier, finding ways that you can say yes more without having those restrictions and barriers attached to them. So those are kind of my final thoughts. Tiff, any last thoughts you've got that you want to add on today? I love that. Like say yes to more things. I think that's so true. And I think have your boundaries, say yes to more things and say no to the things that you need to. So don't say yes, just haphazardly, but take an evaluation and say yes to more, do more, have more fun, take on more opportunities and say no to the things that are like weighing you down. So yeah, I think both sides, you know, say no to the things that say yes to more things, get the yes in life by making sure that you're playing full out. I agree. Tiff, as you said that you're like, say yes to more things. And I thought, believe that you are more today, Mm -hmm. like not with any other judgment, kind of like my dad, like demand and command that you are like you, you, you deserve and you're worthy of the yeses in your life. Um, I was talking to someone else and they said they just hired a nanny and he's like, gosh, I like don't want to admit to people I have a nanny. And I was like, why? Because you feel that guilt of being too bougie now. He's like, yeah, there's a stigma. And I was like, there's actually not. It's your own. It's it's in you like work through that because I'm not judging you of having a nanny. Um, But really just like own your life, own your world and and expect those yeses in your world. Expect life to deliver for you. Expect life to be amazing and magical and and go to work to create it. But realize it can be effortless. It can be easy to get those yeses. I know Tiff and I could tell you all day long getting the yes to patients legit for us is easy. Like I can literally go sit in any TCC and I could crush yeses all day long. And I believe that that's how you can actually live your life is getting those yeses all day long. So Tiff, as always, like talk about a killer soul filling (laughs) podcast that I think we both maybe needed right now. Um, So as always, thanks for thanks for just coming on the pod and always delivering amazing value. I agree. I freaking love podcasting with you. It always just fills my soul up. I love delivering information and I love that I get to do it with you. Thank you. Of course. Well, guys, as always, we appreciate you. And if this podcast is is serving you and blessing your life, uh, leave us a review, uh, share it with a friend. And and if we can help you as um, helping you get more yeses in life personally or professionally in your practice or even just helping with systemization, our job is to, <laughs> we, t- we say this, of what if it could be easy? What if it could be easy to get the yes in life personally and professionally? And that's what our consulting is all about of what if it could be easy being profitable, having an accountable team and um, we, we believe it is, and we have created that. So if that resonates with you, email us, call us hello at the dentally team.com. We'd love to work with you. And as always, thanks for listening. And we'll catch you next time on the dentally team podcast. And that wraps it up for another episode of the dentally team podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll talk to you next time.